We are all gathered here today to remember the killing and the murder of a young innocent young child in front of his mother. I would like to thank you all for coming and would like to welcome you all to this vigil in which we commemorate the murder of a child who has done nothing, who has not committed any crimes, who had no right to die yet he was brutally murdered in front of his mother anyway. No matter what religion or what faith you follow, no matter who you associate with, all people and all humanitarians should condemn this act. It is natural that we find this act horrific and we find this act disgusting as no child, no matter what they have committed, deserves to die, especially a child who has done no crimes, especially a child who has not done anything. <laughs> ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات I can't sleep. My blood is too cheap. My blood is too cheap. I can't sleep. My worthless blood flowing with my heartbeat. I'm less of flesh and bone and more boneless meat. I can't climb out of injustice. I'm in too deep. It's too common to hear that our blood bleeds. Blood flows like rivers and our pile of bodies is steep. We are as cheap as autumn leaves whose carcasses no one wants to sweep. We've been so used to it for so long. It's only a matter of time before our mothers weep. The centuries grow out of years that have themselves grown out of weeks where we've been cut up and chewed up like chew lips weakened by men who underestimate our resolve our tongues are imprisoned by our gums our tongues are imprisoned by our gums they're trialed when they're let loose to speak and that blood that flows through our veins overflows now because it knows how so many want it to bleed so out it seeps i hear them say that death creeps up on you but we welcome it into our home like an old friend no surprise come and rest and feed our babies don't cry when they get cuts because we're well aware of what it's like to bleed we're not wolves because we don't kill for sport, we don't enjoy hurting others, and therefore we're seen as sheep. Fair game, a fair game, made to make us look like we deserve death. Oil and spoils and land and grains of sand are worth more than the air we breathe in, oh man. God damn, God damns those people when he says, oh man, the killing of one person is like the killing of all mankind, but they found loopholes because they don't consider us a part of mankind. How can man of any kind be so unkind? Did their fathers not show them love? Did their fathers not show them love? Allah himself quotes this child when he says what was my sin but not even Allah can convince them since that verse was revealed how many children have there been and therefore our blood is cheap I can't sleep I can't sleep our blood is too cheap 
I can't go on. Our sun is outshone, flickers gone, but we'll march on. We'll march on. In the oceans, our mothers weep. We'll march on. In the oceans of blood so cheap. For I tell you something about our blood. You can shed it, but know that whatever you sow, you reap. So when you tear us up and rip us apart and watch that blood leak out, then you drink that blood like wine and get drunk on our purity. Then you sit and dine on the limbs of our kids because she, our kids, make the best feast. And you bomb us and kill us and rape us and destroy us. But you didn't know that our blood flows with seeds. You thought our blood was cheap, but from the rivers of our blood glows, grows roses. You thought our blood was cheap, but revolutions are born out of it. You thought his blood was cheap, but we will never forget Zakaria. You thought his blood was cheap, but we'll use it to buy your downfall, to buy your end, and then, then, will sleep afhamu salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al karim bismillahi ar rahman ar rahim wa man adlamu mimman iftara ala allah kadiban aw kadhaba bi ayatih innahu la yuflihu al zalimin innahu la yuflihu al zalimun sadaqallahu al ali al azim 1400 years ago a group of terrorists beheaded in broad daylight a toddler in front of his parents that was in the land of karbala but why did they do that it was because that toddler was the son of hussein the grandson of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam We've stood here too many times, my brothers and sisters. I've had enough. We've stood here too many times in vigils, remembering those who have been killed because of injustice, because of this toxic ideology. Today, we also remember the thousands of Shia Muslims who have been murdered by the people who follow this particular ideology. Why? Just because they say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, wa aliyun waliyullah. This child, Zachariah, he was six years old. He was still a baby. He had his whole life in front of him. He could have gone on to do great and awe inspiring things. And yet his life was stolen by a man who beheaded him in front of his screaming mother. And yet, how does the world respond to this? When will these people learn that when the blood of the innocent falls to the ground, that is when the reign of the martyr begins? My heart especially is with this family that is grieving today, that probably feels like no one cares about them. We, the Shia of London, we love and we care about them. And I hope this message gets to them in one way or another. I hope they know that their baby is being taken care of in heaven by Imam al Hussein himself. Because our Imam, he knows exactly what it's like to lose a child. It is no coincidence that a thousand years ago, a man of no Islam, he shot an arrow into the neck of Ali al Asghar. And you find today a man of no Islam behead Zakaria on the streets of Medina. But for his mother especially, my heart, my thought, my prayers have been with her for the last few days. Because the love that a mother has for her child, it, it goes beyond log logic and science. From the moment she finds out she's pregnant, she'll change her whole life for that little baby. She'll start eating differently. She'll start dressing differently. She'll stop doing things that will put her child at risk. Even when she's at home, she'll be extra careful not to knock her pregnant stomach against the corner of a table or a kitchen surface. Imagine then, with all that love, with all that willingness to sacrifice yourself in you, 
Imagine then having to watch your baby boy murdered in front of you and you are powerless to do anything about it. My brothers and sisters, my equals in humanity, at this moment, even though this calamity it is choking us and they mock us for our tears, though they do not realize that it is through our tears we water this revolution. Remember the most important, most powerful weapon each and every one of you have is your prayers. Because our master Imam al-Hassan said that the distance between the heavens and the earth is the cry of an oppressed person in prayer. Imam Ali alayhi salam taught us that wherever there's injustice, we stand up against it. For years, us the Shia have been the subject of oppression and for years the world has been silent on the genocide that goes on daily on the Shia. We're here today in Marbalaj to make it clear to the world and to make it clear to anyone who hasn't heard of the genocide that goes on daily. We are here to make it clear to them that this does happen and it happens every single day. Wherever you go in the world, the Shia are killed or have been the subject of oppression. One has to go no further than Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Nigeria, and South Africa, and many more countries to see the disgusting behavior of some individuals against a minority in Islam. As in naturally, any mother would love to see her child grow up. Any mother would love to see her child grow up and get married, have children of their own. But sadly, that hope for that mother ended on that day. On the 1st of February 2019, the young Zakaria was brutally beheaded by that individual. Take a companion like Hujr bin Adi al-Kindi. When his son was killed in front of him, his only wish before his son was killed was that his son would be killed before him. Why? Someone asked. Everyone loves their children. If you have a child, you know you love them more than anything in this world. When Hujr bin Adi's son was beheaded in front of him, he smiled a smile in front of them. And when asked why, he said, I am honored that my son died loving Ali. I fear that you may brainwash him into loving you. But since he's killed in the path of Ali alayhi salam and the Ahlul Bayt, I am honored. I have no reason to fear anymore. And that's why I give this direct message to anyone who's had anyone lost because of this terroristic ideology. And to everyone watching, to everyone here, and to everyone listening at home. I would like to say, and to the mother of Zakaria, I congratulate you. I congratulate the mother of Zakaria, and I congratulate the father of Zakaria, and I congratulate the family of Zakaria, and I congratulate the Shia of Zakaria, and all the families that have lost someone in the path of Ali. I, congrat I congratulate them for raising such stars and flowers that because of their love for Ali, they have now joined Ali alayhi salam. She, a pronoun often misused, misjudged, and incorrectly defined. Although she refers to one girl, it is she who puts the man in mankind. Yes, she is a three-letter word and cannot take much physically, but the, let the rooted markings on her face, which are scattered so freely, speak up to the emotion and mental stress she bears daily. The type that causes discoloration in her hair and puddles on her cheekbones, the kind that only she, and only she, can bear alone. They, they say home is where the heart is. But when she, he comes home, he says, where is she? So although she is a pronoun, she is also a connective, connecting the source of our existence to peace and tranquility. She is the manifestation of peace and love in her family. She manifests and manifests until they become flourishing members in society. So you see, she is also a noun and a verb. She constantly gives and loves with no restraint and protects and nurtures without a single complaint. When she vows to protect you, she does so with every bone in her body. Her love knows no limits, what we would all call unconditionally. But often she may love with the expectation of gratitude. So appreciate that she is your helper, 
your advisor, your safe haven, and make her feel valued. She provides the difference between good and best. She will monitor your finances so that even your accountant is impressed. It is her tears which race down when she hears about the oppressed. And when it is time to battle the injustices, she is first to protest. So you see, she is a concept, a state of being, one which the English language can't explain in one category. She is the mother, the sister, the daughter, the wife, and any she that came to your mind immediately. So young Zakaria, although you didn't live to see the sacrifices she makes and would have made, your mother loves you and wishes you would have stayed. Although it hurts to see you gone, she knows you didn't die in vain. You left this world because the oppressors are so offended by a title, by a name. And to know that Abdullah, son of Hussein, was martyred before you, eases the pain. So young Zakaria, know that history is repeating itself again, and your mother knows it too, but still wishes she hadn't got into that taxi. But there is no shortage in oppressors. In fact, they are spread around evenly. That where she didn't get into this taxi, there would be another one, another train station, another attack on our religiosity. Oppression is a disease which has existed for centuries and will not be cured until the Imam's reappearance and his 313. They say, your problem feels less problematic when you see other problems in comparison. Like when it's time for the battle of Karbala and Umm al banin gives up four of her sons. Or when Zainab alayhi salam sees nothing but beauty. Despite the martyrdom of her brother, she makes it her duty. So as to maintain the principles set by Hussein. So when events like the ones in Karbala happen again, know you have been chosen to live a somewhat reflection of their pain. So my dear Zakaria, may you rest in peace knowing that the females in history did not stand up only to fall consequently. So your mother will stand with them, firm with dignity. And since heaven lies under her blessed feet and you are killed by the hands of the oppressors, then in heaven you shall meet. So you see, she will always be there. Your mother will always be your she and will love you for eternity. Let's appreciate and respect the females in our lives. They are the mothers of humanity. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.